Unlocking Old School RuneScape one tile at a time, but starting on the Isle of Souls, the most unused and desolate place in all of Gilnor. Probably. Unlocking tiles with XP, quests, achievement diaries, combat achievements, clue scrolls, and collection log slots. You name it. Oh, and did I mention the XP scales? Join me on this journey of mental deterioration and addiction, of unlocking one tile at a time. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 9 of my Tileman series. So, last episode, spoiler alert, we unlocked Tempros. Now, I have got a few more tiles since last episode ended and I was just doing some trout and salmon fishing just to get some more for... I don't know, in case I step off the tiles in Tempros basically. And it's always nice to have extra tiles on a Tileman. That's what the game mode's about. But I didn't record that because I was just doing it while I was eating. So I've got like 40 extra tiles, 34 or something. I have made a slot in the bank for Tempros loot and just the extra fish that I had. Last episode we got two combat tasks complete. One for extinguishing five fires at w in one fight and one for repairing a master totem pole. So we've still got some more that we can easily get, like subdue Tempros five times. This one's a little harder, guess we need another like 100 tiles. Insane. But this episode, at least at the beginning, we're just going to send a load of Tempros. I'll update you every now and then, and I think a 10 kill count will loot the pool. So, honestly, tiles should fly in this episode. I want to try and get some quests done. I'm not sure what quests yet, but I want to try and get some quests done. But for now, let's spoon some of these items. As you can see, I got a first collection log slot on the account. 20 tiles achieved just for getting these spirit flakes. So let's hope that I can get some more uniques while I'm here. Oh, and also, last episode I mentioned that I might unlock construction to get experience for repairing the masts, but I'm a bit of an idiot and forgot how hard that is on a game mode like this. The closest estate agent is Varok, and I'm nowhere near Varok yet, I've not got any tiles around there. Barbarian Village is the closest. So for now, we're doing it without any construction XP. As you can see, we're just about finishing up here. I got some extra fish, but didn't feel like I'd have time because I weren't hitting the essence enough, but hopefully this kills it. This should. Probably could have used some extra fish, but that's fine. This is kill count number two. As you can see, I've used <laughs> quite a lot of tiles. Oh, I got a medium combat task. That is the one for not being hit, I think. Yeah, subdue Tempros alone without getting hit by any fires, torrents or waves. Medium tasks are worth 10 for me. So that's 10 tiles that I'll add on shortly. If you could have seen on the island before, I've basically filled in the entire side of the island, minus like a few squares. I've just been doing it laxly, left clicking everything, that's why I got some extra tiles. And I'm currently 22 tiles lower than what I went in with. And you've got to bear in mind, that's after gaining tiles from the XP that I got within the quest, uh, within the kill, sorry. So, yeah, I probably used about 30 tiles in there additional. So the side of the island's pretty packed right now. I got seven reward permits, just like last time. So I'm going to add these tiles on, tiles added, I've now got 43, and I'm going to get back into some more Temporos. See you soon. Seeing as I'm inefficient and want to end up doing this for a long time, I'm going to go and unlock this water pump. Now it's what, seven tiles to use it? But it lets me fill up the water buckets before the game. I could do it between the games, after the game, or whatever, but I just think this makes it a bit easier, and I'll get more than them seven tiles back from doing Temporos anyway. Also something I totally glossed over, hit a million experience. Kill count number three, got eight permits that time. Kill count number four, got nine permits this time, going up in the world. For anyone wondering as well, if like doing something like this goes against the spirit of a tile man or anything like that, like Winter Todd kinda does. The XP that I'm getting at the minute is lower than I'd get for cooking and fishing trout. I'm getting 27,000 experience an hour including fishing and cooking. So do with that information what you will, but this is perfectly balanced in my opinion. Cooking from the fish that you get from the reward pool is just all a benefit. And this is kill count number 5 coming in. Another 9 points. And a combat task. Tempros Novice, which is just subdue Tempros 5 times. Okay, we're currently sitting at 98 bonus tiles from the achievement diaries, collection log slots and combat achievements, which is really cool. We're nearly at 100 bonus tiles. So, I know I said that I was going to wait till 10 kill count to loot, but I'm excited. So I'm going to go and get these 33 permits now and then we'll do another 5 kills and then get some more. Because, let's be real, everyone's just here for the loot. Ready? Go. 
Oh, a casket. That's my first one. Oh, another collection log slot. That's my first soaked pages, so I'm just gonna stop for a second and add those on. 20 tiles have been added. Let's carry on. Uh, currently sat on 73 available tiles. If you know, you know. Another casket. Okay, that's not bad. We got a lot of food, we got a new collection slot item, and we got two caskets. Now, I was tempted to save up all the caskets to, <laughs> at the ending just to open them at once, but I think it's better to do it now, while we're here. Seven emerald bracelets, interesting. I can sell them for cash. And three diamond rings. Again, can sell them for cash. I don't really need ring of lives. I mean, one might be nice, and as I'm playing a hardcore, and it'll respawn me on Lumbridge where I've unlocked. So uh, they might have a use. This is what the Temporos tab currently looks like. Off to do another five kills. Okay, got a beekeeper random event. What is this, random event number 77 or something? Attempted, I don't know. So I think this is gonna be worth the tiles because he's got four pieces of the outfit, which is 80 tiles. Let's find out anyway. So, do, 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 do. I can't actually remember how to do this. That's a lid, right? Like that, right? Awesome. Okay, so it takes two tiles to do the beekeeper event and I got some legs. Yes! Finally, a random event collection slot. Collection slot, collection log slot. Oh, I've been waiting so long. <laughs> like, I've tried getting a lot of these already. I've not even had the, the like princess person for the frog token. That is huge and best in slot legs. Hell yeah. Add those tiles now. Tiles added. Now I've got 60 tiles from collection log slots. That is awesome. And we're at 138 bonus tiles overall. Well, I've just found something that might pose a problem in the long run. <laughs> you see the tiles here. Can you tell which ones are marked and which ones aren't? This is a little bit lighter, so you can tell this one's not marked, right? But if you go to west, this one looks marked, but it's not. You see, I've got unlocked tileman tile. And that's because I've not run over it yet, but I can't really tell. So in the long run, this might be pretty, pretty hard if I get more areas like this, which is definitely possible. 50 fishing achieved. Nice little milestone. Six kill count. I'm getting nine permits every game now, that's awesome. Seven kill count. Eight kill count. Two more to go to loot. Kill count number nine coming in. For a nine minute kill. Nice. For nine permits as well. And there it is. Kill count number 10. Completed a medium combat task. Temporos champion. 10 tiles added. This means it's time to do some more loot. I've got 45 points in five games, which is really good. Those five games have taken me about 50 minutes. So I'm on about 54 points an hour. And to be honest, I think that's pretty good. I'm not sure how long I'm gonna stay at Temporos. I might go away and do some quests or something. I'll try to do a quest, but let's get some loot. Well, first I've got to get a net. Let's get fishing. More soaked pages. More soaked pages. <laughs> and that's it. Not even a casket. Well, as always next time. Look at all this raw food that I've got there. I might actually cook this to get some more experience before I go anywhere. But this is what the Temporos tab's looking like. 23 soaked pages. We have got quite a lot of raw fish. Now you might be asking yourself, why the hell is this dude water striking <laughs> some seagulls? And well, there's good reason for it. That's because this level gets me 500 total, which is awesome. 500 total already is actually really cool considering I've got so many skulls at level one. Nice. Sounds a bit weird and like a waste of tiles, but I'm gonna unlock this because it tells you how many total rewards you've claimed. And I just like looking at this stuff. So yeah, it took a tile. I'm surprised it didn't take two, to be honest. I'm glad you can look at it from the side. But there we are, currently claimed 85 rewards. Now, I'm gonna be doing Temporos as a whole for a long time. I think at bare minimum, I want to unlock the tackle box and the fish barrel. The term of water will be nice and the other stuff, it's just all nice to hit, but I'm not expected to hit it. 
I'm definitely going to go for the tackle box and fish barrel though, as they're the most realistically attainable. So, in the meanwhile, and between all of that, I don't just want to release five episodes in a row of just doing Tempros, because that's boring for a viewer. It's a little bit boring for me personally, doing it constantly for weeks on end just to hit certain drops. But, I am going to be coming back here a lot. Um, but I want a lot of breaks. Like, I have 133 tiles right now that I'm just not using. I could be doing a lot of things with those. Now, as I said, I want to unlock Guardians of the Rift because the minigame is just really cool. And rune crafting and runes in general will be really good on an account like this, as I said in the previous episode. However, to do that, I need multiple quests. Well, I need rune mysteries to start with, and then I need to do, I think, it is it Temple of the Eye? Yeah, Temple of the Eye, which also requires the end of the Abyss mini quest. The benefit to doing rune mysteries as my first quest is that it also unlocks the ability to do Priest in Peril by getting the rune essence. And unlocking Mauritania would also be awesome, because I'd like to try doing Barrows at some point pretty early on. Obviously not yet with these stats, but I want to try it pretty early just for fun. And again, the best way to meet both those goals is Rune Mysteries. So I think I'm going to put any tiles that I've got right now and that I get from Temporos into completing that quest. Now, Rune Mysteries obviously have got to run around quite a bit. It's not nothing like one small favour. But you've got to talk to the Duke in Lumbridge, which I've not unlocked. You've got to make your way to the Wizard's Tower, which I've not unlocked. And you've got to get to Varrock and talk to Wizard Audrey. Audrey? Aubrey? It's something like that, I can't remember his exact name. But, the Wizard. And that'll also unlock the Rune Shop, meaning that we can actually buy runes to train more magic. So, I think this is the route that we're going to take. Varrock's obviously useful for a lot of quests. <laughs> like, quite a few quests are in Varrock. But... For the minute, we're going to try Rune Mysteries. When that's complete, we're going to choose where to go from there. But when we run out of tiles, straight back to Temporos. And then rinse and repeat. Talk to Tile Man. Talk to Tile Man. <laughs> so, let's crack on with Rune Mysteries then. First things first, got to get to Lumbridge to speak to the Duke. Okay, so, 133 tiles starting. Let's see where we get to. I need to get... To the basement anyway so i may as well unlock down to this door okay that's the staircase we're gonna need to speak to sigmund anyway for one of the quests so i may as well take a step forward to speak to the duke and there we go first quest started i do have the quest helper on for this if it's a bit obstructive let me know and i'll turn it off for future quests uh it's just from when i play my other accounts because it just helps out so much okay so now we need to get to the wizard's tower we have a few options for this. Option one, we can just run straight through from Lungbridge Castle all the way to the Wizard's Tower, which at an estimate is around 140 tiles to get to the ground floor. We've also got option two of going to Alcaride, doing the trick to get to Port Sarim, and then running there, which will take more than 140, leaving Lungbridge Castle as the best option. But we do have another option, the Necklace of Passage. The Necklace of Passage can teleport us directly onto the bridge at the Wizard's Tower, meaning we'd be around 15 to 20 tiles away rather than 140. This saves us 120 tiles, meaning if we can obtain a Necklace of Passage for lower than 120 tiles, we'll be saving tiles. As the area between Lumbridge Castle and the Wizard's Tower isn't all required for the account, that means that we can save the tiles, so we should try. Also, the Necklace can teleport us to an area of the desert, albeit not that useful, as well as to the outpost, which is just southwest of Trinum Stronghold, possibly unlocking agility. To work out if this path is worth it, we need to look at how to get a Necklace of Passage. A Necklace of Passage is an enchanted jade necklace, meaning we require a cosmic rune and 27 magic to cast level to enchant. We can get the required runes for the magic level from Varrock during the quest. To make the jade necklace, we require a silver bar and a jade, as well as a necklace mold. A necklace mold is most easily obtained from the crafting shop in Alcaride. Although this will take about 25 to 30 tiles, it's a place I want to unlock regardless, so there's no loss obtaining the necklace mold. A silver bar and jade are not as easily attainable with my current unlocks. Both are drops from the casket from Temporos reward table, however obtaining the casket and specifically hitting those drops would take a long time, and is highly improbable. So I'll go about obtaining the silver bar the normal way, mining and smithing. Now, as we're aware, if you followed this far, I've not unlocked either skill yet. I don't even have an ore next to any tile, so I'll need to unlock a mine. 
My first thought was a mine southwest of Varrock, but the mine only has tin, not copper, so smithing would be impossible, and I need the smithing level to make the silver bar. Then I thought back to my time stranded on the island. The Isle of Souls mines within 30 tiles of my unlocks, and contains every ore up to mithril. As the Soul Wars bank is moderately close by, this is definitely worth unlocking. Mining silver requires 20 mining, and smithing it into a bar requires 20 smithing. The mining level should come naturally, so let's talk about the smithing. As we've not got access to an anvil, and we've got to obtain 20 smithing from just bars, reaching 15 smithing would require 386 bronze bars, so that'd be 386 tin and 386 copper. Then 15 to 20 smithing, it'd require 165 iron bars, but because you lose 50% of them in the process, it's more like a 330 iron ores, but it's definitely attainable for just 30 or so tiles, so it's on the cards. Next is the jade. There are quite a few methods of obtaining jades, the only one close to me however are thieving ham members. This requires level 15 thieving, but as I have access to men this shouldn't be a problem. The problem is that the ham hideout is around 60 tiles away, and I also need to use some inside. Also the ham hideout is halfway to the wizard's tower so technically, those tiles could have been contributed towards the wizard's tower, but as it's a little bit to the north, it's not really on the way to the wizard's tower, it's on the way to Draenor, so I'll let that one slide. Also, failing to pickpocket the ham members can lead to being chucked out, I meaning they've either got to waste tiles or wait out the Lumbridge teleport timer to get back. I could use these teleports to my advantage though to get to the wizard's tower, but maybe not, probably not worth it. The ham hideout is required for various quests, so again, the tiles are all useful. Then we've also got the Cosmic Rune. A lot of monsters drop Cosmic Runes, and I've also got the option of using the Edgeville Lever to get to the Mage Arena Bank. I could also train Hunter to 52 and catch some barehanded essence imps. Choices, choices. I'm not sure what route I'll take yet, but if I take the combat route, there are some moss giants on the Isle of Souls near the spawn point, but I've not got many runes left and I've not trained range yet, so I wonder if I could melee them efficiently. They've got a drop rate of 1 in 64 for Cosmic Runes. Finally, if I want to make the Jade Necklace, I actually need 25 crafting. I can either blow glass from charter ships, or craft leather. As I'm miles away from a charter ship, and cows are only a few tiles away, and I've got access to the tannery in Alcarid, I'll go with that option, which is 569 leather gloves. And so the hunt for the Jade Necklace begins. Now that's over with, let's crack on. So I've been looking at men, for a while, and I think this is the one with the least wonder distance, so even if I have to unlock a few tiles, it shouldn't be a that big a deal. To thieving. I swapped the man because that one went inside, and I've just had to use a tile, but 13 to go. 5 thieving. As you can see, I've had to use another 4 tiles here, and they just run everywhere. I've not really got a choice unless I got like to unlock the men in Edgeville or something. Whenever they get trapped in this corner, they're staying there for quite a while. I had to grab some food. I'm so close to 10th even, this is so annoying. I love when they get trapped up here, but when they wander off, it's like, oof. Finally. Okay. 10th even. Whew. Five to go. And there we go. 15th even. As you can see, there's a couple of tiles that I ended up stepping on, but all in all, I used about six. I think that's worth it. I've got two back from it, so it's not the end of the world. Anyway, the reason that I want to do ham members first is because it's the most volatile out of the bunch. Like, if I get teleported around, it's it can take quite a while, so I want to make sure I can get the jade first, because the mining, the necklace mold, the cosmic rune, I know that I can get those. It might just take some tile commitment. This is the one I'm not sure on. Okay, so we're going to make our way to the ham hideout. I'm just going to click over here and let it auto-mark it all, because I'm, I'm sure we've got enough tiles to get there. What did I use? 67? Not the end of the world. Okay, here we go. Ooh, easy task complete. Completely forgot that was a thing. These extra tiles might help. Okay, okay. Five bonus tiles. I've got 25 tiles to actually get to a hand member to pickpocket them. I'm not sure I'm going to have enough, so let's just find out. Really? It takes you a tile backwards to open the door? I need this area anyway for some quests, so I'm not that bothered about using some tiles in it. This might take a while. Okay, good start. Where's it gonna throw me? <sighs> Into the prison. So, obviously, <laughs> I can't do anything from here. I need this unlocked for the quest, again, so it's not the end of the world, but I'm gonna have to go and get some more tiles before I come back. Got a home teleport back to Lumbridge. I'm glad I've got a tile just in case it puts me on a square that I've not unlocked. I think I've got all of the home spawn ones now, though. Yep, 
cool. Because I just got the other achievement diary task, it made me remember. I've now actually caught a salmon in Lumbridge yet. And I've got one tile left, so I'm going to walk here and actually catch one. Okay, there we go. Medium task. Oh, I thought it was an easy. Okay, that's 15 tiles. That's huge. Okay, the tiles have been added on. And I think I'm actually going to go straight back to the ham hideout now. And we're back. And yeah, I've used 88 tiles already on this jade necklace hunt. And considering the wizard's tower from Lumbridge Castle was only 140, it might seem like this isn't worth it. But all the tiles that I would have unlocked in the middle would have been useless. And like I said, the ham hideout is needed for quests. The crafting um, shop in Alcreed is going to be needed. So this is worth it. At least that's what I tell myself. Oops, hit a guard. Well, just in case he drops out. Come on, hurry up and die. Yes. An iron pick. Ooh, an iron pickaxe. That might actually be really useful. Oh, I'm really happy I did this before the mining grind now. That genuinely makes me really happy even though I just got knocked out. Ah, so this is what I was worried about. It's placed me over here. And if you have a look, this is actually so close to the wizard's tower, but it's not really that close because it's still like 60, 70 tiles away. Just to get from here to the Jade Necklace teleport is maybe 50, 60. So what I'm going to have to do from here is <laughs> wait for my home teleport cooldown, which is 22 minutes and come back after. So yeah, see you soon. Okay, home teleport just come off cooldown and finally move. It feels weird being locked to a single tile for so long. I'm forever just going to have this random spot. <laughs> and here we are again. I have just looked on the wiki and ham guards, the one that I killed earlier that dropped with the iron pickaxe, actually also drop on cut jades. And from killing them, I'm not I'm not sure if it kicks you out. But while I'm waiting for the female ham members to come here, I may as well kill them. Because if I've got a chance at dropping a jade, it's great. One in 55 according to the wiki. The downside is, I can't pickpocket ham members while I'm in combat. Oh, and my thieving's dropped from being kicked out. Potato seeds. I'll actually take those. They're really useful when I get an allotment patch. Now, it doesn't seem like you get kicked out for killing the guards. So, honestly... It might just be better to kill them for the jade rather than pickpocket. Because then I've got no way of being kicked out. First herb on the account as well. I'm going to keep the raw chicken as well just in case I need it for a quest. Because I know some quests require it. No. Ah, crap. Well, I'm going to go to bed for the night. Okay, it's the next morning. Uh, my membership actually ran out and I've just had to bond it. But because of that, it spawned me in Lumbridge anyway. So <laughs> let's go back to the ham hideout. And we've got a home teleport as backup. Attempt number three. I should have probably brought that iron dagger if I'm going to kill him, but I'll thieve them the first time, and then when I come back from the Lumbridge home telly, I'll start killing him. No way. Well, got to mark this tile. I banked all the useful stuff and picked up the iron dagger, seeing as I'm going to be killing some guards for a bit. Ooh, rusty sword. We need that for some diaries. Are you easy on the way, maybe? Ooh. I don't really want to thieve anymore. Because I don't want to get kicked out. I just want to attack. Oh, what a waste of a tile. I should have just committed. Oh, I've just got a steel dagger. Oh, new best in slot achieved. Completely forgot that's even on the drop table. I got it from pickpocketing as well. No more thieving. That's failing twice now. Next one probably kicks me out. Just hit 30 defense. Can now wear adamant. So we're going to swap back to strength for a while. 30 attack, 30 defense, 32 strength. We'll train strength for a while, I guess. So we can get a rune weapon. I just accidentally pickpocketed a hand member and got a steel pickaxe. That's awesome. It's so, I'm so happy that I came before I started mining. That entire last clip, by the way, was recorded on a PvP world. Didn't realize till I logged out and it's like, oh, you're on a PvP world. Absolutely crazy. Also just got best in slot gloves. Nice. The wrong one. But well, I'll take it anyway. Is that a best in slot hood I see? Yes, it is. I'm looking baller. <laughs> best in slot boots. Currently 53 kills in. Uh, two more kills expected for the Jade. Probably going to go dry, but I'm going to keep going. No way. I got on exactly 55 kill count. There it is. Okay, objective one complete. Assuming that I don't fail to turn it into a Jade. From the hand members as well, I got three kawaii for the crafting grind and some buttons for animal magnetism. So I decided to bank those as well. Rusty Sword for Ardun Diary as previously stated as well. This is my current Temporos tab. Now, I've only got 15 tiles. I've still got to train crafting, 
get to the crafting shop in Alcarid. I've got to unlock the mine. I've got to <laughs> smith all the bars. I've got a lot to do. And because of that, this episode's going to be a two-parter. Now, I'm going to release part two tomorrow. So free up your calendars. Between episodes, I'm going to send a bunch of Tempros and start part two with a loot montage. Don't know how many kills I'm going to do. Maybe 10. Might get another 90 permits or so. Uh, 10 kills before got me 85. But if I keep getting 9 permits per game, then I'll end up with 90. So that should be a fun start to next episode. And I'll hopefully have about 100 tiles just to try and do the rest of these tasks. And then next episode, we're going to get the Jade Necklace and complete rune mysteries. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe. I'm also going to put some links on the screen to the playlist for this series in case you missed any other ones, as well as a fact video that I did a while ago. Just because it's not Tileman content, people might have missed it. It's a cool video. Check it out. Bye.